Lots of buzzing today at Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. Do you know what these are? These are bees, and we are live on the road in Western Connecticut with Marina, who is a master beekeeper. She turned a passion into a wonderful business, and so we're coming out to see your hives and your bees and to learn all about them. Yeah, thanks for coming out and checking out the honeybees. Ah, it's a little cold out here, but we saw a little bit of action. Yeah, as it warms up a little bit, you'll start to see some of the bees coming in and out. Basically, what they're doing is what we call cleansing flights. So they come out, they fly around, they get a little exercise, they stretch their wings, and then they do their business, and then they go back in when it's cold. Oh, my goodness, because a lot of people don't realize how awesome honeybees really are and the things that they create we all only think of sort of like honey right yeah <laughs> so base what one of the main things that really surprised me when i first started beekeeping was they pollinate our food they visit flowers basically to gather nectar to make honey which is their food but also they move pollen flower to flower and they are pollinating our food so that we have fruits and vegetables nuts, seeds, oils, all of the food that we eat every day. Wow, it's, it's so cool. I mean, we, the last time we were here, which was maybe like at least 10 years ago, when this had, has changed a lot, I remember you had the hives and we went out and got to see the bees and they were pretty busy, but because today's a little bit cold. Yeah, and right? last time you were here, I think I had only about three or four colonies. And you can see oh, now the apiary has grown. Yeah, so and it's I a, know it's, you used the smoker when we were here, right? We're yeah, so I basically, yeah, we're not going to use it today, but I just wanted to show you the bee smoker. It's one of the tools that beekeepers use. That was use. fun when we did it. Yeah, so Marina it, it basically, yeah, it puffs up smoke and it calms down the bees. So when we have to do our inspections, um, it keeps the bees uh, deterred from our um, inspections when we open up the hive. And the hive tool serves to prop open any sticky wooden ware so that we can move things around and, you know, check and see what's going on inside the hive. And what is going on? No, well, today it's not going on because, again, we can't really open it and see them. But normally, um, what will be going on in there? Because that's what's really intricate. It's, there's a queen bee. Come on down. We're going to walk down this way, Marina, because it's cold and we want to go inside because we're not seeing Yeah, we're going to go into the honey normal, house right? barn. Hun Yay! Normally, there's... So a queen bee, right? I mean, it's really like an intricate thing. Yeah, every single hive has one queen bee. She's the mother of all the bees in the hive. The mother of all bees. And oh, she wait, basically, here. she basically, uh, she basically lays all the eggs and keeps the numbers of the colony up. And it's the worker bees that are doing all of the work. They're the ones that are visiting the flowers, gathering nectar, making the honey, cleaning the hive, raising the young, feeding the young. They do all the activities of the hive the queen bee oh well that's a whole <laughs> other conversation they have one queen bee always it's just amazing that that can happen well they've been doing it for thousands of, thousands years, of years so they really know what they're doing and they've survived for so many thousands of years which is amazing especially nowadays because we're having some problems with the climate changing and i know that's been an issue for you too i want to before we get to that I, this has nothing to do with bees, okay? Well, this but is the birds and the bees. That's right. We're not going to talk about that. That's a family show. Um, yeah, we have all different breeds. Um, and right now, uh, it, again, it's a little bit cool. The days are shorter, so they don't lay as many eggs. But basically, we have chickens because we love fresh oh, eggs. They're so cute. Oh, my God. There's all different types and stuff. Now, and with the bees, are they basically just honeybees or are there different varieties? Well, we raise honeybees. Beekeepers generally have honeybees. There's some mason bees, but we have thousands of native bees all over the U.S., um, you know, in the wild. But basically, beekeepers manage honeybees because they're domesticated livestock. They pollinate and they make wonderful honey. And, and so we'll many other things and that we're going to see in here because I had no idea that I thought, you know, of course, honey. But there's so much more to it. So many things. So much. How, why did you get involved? I know it was a passion for you, but did you realize it would grow? I like had this? no idea. It was really just a hobby. One of my neighbors introduced me to honeybees, and I got one hive of bees that I thought would be my weekend hobby, and it just took off. They're fascinating creatures. They so really let's are. go inside yes, the honey house barn um, and and take a look because uh, it's a little cold, as I said. <laughs> 
Oh, Hi. This is great. Okay, and we've got guests too. Yeah. Because we're going to do on a in. couple of pairings, and we're going to see these wonderful products. Uh, let's say hello to your wonderful guests. Yeah. Our this guests. is my this friend is Rachel. 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 Good to see you. How are it's you? good to see you. <laughs> Rachel, Rachel is a honey fan. fan. Yes, and a honey fan. And this yes. is Vic. Hi, Vic. How are you? And you love good the honey too. Certainly do. <laughs> uh, and the wine, right? Rachel? And Vic is also a beekeeper. He helps with uh, you know with the honey and the beekeeping. So he's been really. And built this barn because he again, built the when barn. we were here so many years ago, you didn't have this. It's beautiful, and there's a beautiful upstairs where you do different pairings. You have classes. Look who's trying to get in, Layla. Oh, but ah, Layla, Layla, we have to bring her. our little rescue doggy. Come on, honey. And by the way, Layla is a Layla, rescue. Come. Look at her. She's so cute. We wanted to bring that up too. Say so, hello. Say hello. Oh, look at her. She's, she can't live without I me. Love this sweater. Point. I know. She's just like bark, bark, barking. Doggy, barking. Say you hello just recently to everybody. rescued her. You said. She's a recent yes. rescue. She's such a good She's a girl. Dog. Oh, look at her. Does she like honey? She likes she honey. Dogs honey. I'm not sure. So w what do we have here? I mean, this is the beauty of it. It's more than just honey. honey. And how did you, uh, how were you able to expand into these other products? So literally, um, the first thing that I started to do was harvest my beeswax because here, this is how the honey comes out of the hive in these beautiful frames. Oh, wow. And the bees store it in beeswax. So not only do you get the beautiful honey out of these frames, you actually can harvest the beeswax. So we take the beeswax, we separate it, and then you can do so many different things, like make candles. Lovely. The first thing that I started to make was lip balm. Oh, that's, I remember when we, you, you were on the show when you were just starting and you had this. Yeah, so lip balm is beeswax and that's olive cool. oil with some flavor. Mm. It's so easy. It's one of the things. I love it. Can we try this? Yeah. That one's yours. Oh, <laughs> oh it's lovely. Especially yeah, it's now so in the smooth oh, on your lips. It is. And then we mm. make candles here. So beautiful beeswax candles, burned Gorgeous. clean, smokeless, really, really precious. Do people have bees as pets? Can they do? Th I mean, I understand they're very smart. I know it they sounds are silly smart, and ridiculous, but you but know they do their thing. So in a way, they're they are sort of pets. It's a hobby, but they are really pollinating. They're working. And they're, you know, they're, they're pollinating our garden because we have an edible garden here. Oh, so we okay. have a lot of food that we grow to eat. But also they pollinate our flowers and, and, and the food for the wildlife. Wow. You know, they're pollinating different flowers and plants in, in nature so that all of the animals in nature can eat, the birds, the deer. So they're really doing a lot of benefit to That's why I guess our environment. Where the saying busy as a bee comes from, right? Exactly. Yeah. And exactly. we talked about the climate briefly there and some of the troubles that beekeepers are having. Are you are you seeing the same sort of issues? Yeah, so one of the big problems is is that when the temperature is too warm when there's no flowers like in November, so like we saw the bees come out. They're not that active, but if the, the temperature went up to about 70 degrees, 65, they would be out active because they operate by the temperature. And when they come out on a warm day in November or December and there's no flowers, they get a little confused. They'd be confused, yes. So that's really the issue with climate change is that they are their activity is based upon the temperature, not by whether there's flowers or not. So when we have these warm days, they're confused and then they, you know, exercise, they fly, they burn energy and then they eat up all the honey they've stored up for the winter. Right. And then they don't have honey left. So that can be. Certainly. So that's a problem. Yeah, certainly. Um, all right. Now let's let's talk about something positive. <laughs> so we have some mead that we made, which oh, is wow. a honey wine. OK. And uh, we had a mead maker help us. It's essentially our honey with some water and yeast. And, and it's a honey wine. It's an ancient drink that was um, ah, have made for thousands we'll of years of after. and we <laughs> also and we also make a honey facial scrub which is for your face wow. honey is not only good inside but outside on your skin it's moisturizing it's gentle so honey is amazing and all of this comes from the honey from those hives most of it does okay. yeah most of our honey comes from here and then, that then we this use. of course is a hive this and this is a frame a frame so you can see how they yes. actually store and cap the honey here. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Now, we should say you're also uh, very well studied on this. I mean, you even went to Italy for a class, you know, because it seems like, oh, this is fun, this is a hobby, but th there's a lot that goes into this. You've written books. Yeah. Which is, this is not my your, first your book. Personal, this is my second book right. called I The Honey Connoisseur. But also you travel. 
Uh, you give classes, you give lectures, um, and again, you have to constantly keep up with that. Yeah, there's a lot to learn, there's a lot to change. You're always learning something about beekeeping or honey or different things that you can do with it. So it's a never ending hobby. It's like the rabbit hole, like you go in and you discover this whole new world. And I'm learning all the time. There's always something to learn. There's always something to do. It's amazing, it, and, and what you have done now. What you were talking about, uh, we talked about it briefly when we walked in about the pairings. Explain what that is, because you do do classes with that. And, I, and Rachel's sitting there with your little Layla. Oh, um, look at her! We can give her something. How, how do you do that? You talk about what pairs well with the honey. Yeah. So one of the things that was so interesting is that the honey changes flavor and color and smell depending upon the season and the flowers that the bees oh, are visiting. Okay. And that became so interesting. That's really what my second book is about, all of the different flowers that bees make honey from and the different flavors. Oh, okay. So basically, um, we'll start out with a little bit of a crystallized honey, which is like a spring that honey. It's just delightful. And you can pair it with cheeses on bread. It's amazing. Let's have Rachel and Vic be our taste testers. Who's going to be our <laughs> taste testers? We're going to put a little bit of honey on the bread, which is amazing, and even some cheese together. For unexpected, you might not <laughs> think that this goes. Take I'll a little taste. Here. We'll have to get a... <laughs> and you can your... taste the yeah. honey with the cheese, is and it's it... amazing. Yeah, because that would, be so, uh, that would be something you might think of, but how about the cheese and the sweetness? Oh, it's perfect. Oops. <laughs> Oh, she, she's licking the honey. I get to turn <laughs> oh, oh, that's adorable. That's she, has, she sometimes serves it fresh out of the hive. Oh, yeah, so like right this, right? So you can uh, also do like a beautiful like yogurt delightful. with some honey. Okay, so that would be another thing. So yeah, you teach classes on this so people can get different ideas. This would seem like something for the holiday that would really be... Uh, really a great thing to do that. Let's try it with maybe How about this. you? Oh, let me try that. This is yogurt with mm -hmm. honey, which is a classic. Ew, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ooh, it's I the best, that. right? Mm. You mm. popped your top. It, was, popped, so it was so good. <laughs> oh, it's delicious. And that it's is so something I would not think of. Yeah. I would not think of that. So that's what's sort of a little bit unexpected. So Part it's of diverse. what we do here at the Honey House Barn mm. is I have mm. been doing these talk tours and tastings for the public because people are fascinated to learn about bees and to come and see the hives. So we have these events. The next one and the last one probably of the year is on November 25th, which is the Sunday after okay. the long weekend of Thanksgiving. So people can come. Yeah, and people, you know, they have this great Thanksgiving dinner, and then the weekend they're thinking, well, what can we do? Well, you can sign up on yeah. our website, redbee.com, ah. and come. And then we take you through the apiary. We do a tour. I talk about bees, what they're doing, and people can ask questions. And then we go upstairs to our honey house, and we do like a sit-down honey tasting. And everybody will get to taste five different honeys wow. with five different mm. cheeses and foods and breads. And I, really, it's delicious. Should we give Vic a little try? try of something? Yeah, how about <laughs> a little bit of honey? Well, I think it, it's interesting to see the diversity of what you can pair together, too, that you might not think of. Well, you it know, one on of the over. other crazy <laughs> things that I do is tahini. Oh, that's good. Tahini and honey, you would never believe that it was so Don't good. Don't your top like <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, honey... You wouldn't think of... You would, yeah. Honey, yeah. Honey yeah. goes with well, every food with group. Yeah. People don't think of with. Absolutely that's not. One thing that she teaches a lot of. Yeah, I usually so just think of honey with simple things like maybe an tea. apple or tea or yeah. Yeah, yeah. But this seems really nice. So that's yeah. So what I'm that. doing is I'm trying to change people's perspective on honey and get them to start using honey in all different mm. foods besides just tea. Besides just tea, right? Because that would be. So now, now I just so want to give people a brief look at some of the other. Uh, things mm -hmm. that you create, the items. And also, of course, this is what we did last time, so we're going to have to come back in the spring and we can put our outfits on and everything. Oh. That's what you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So these are two uh, curious producers from the Food Network that came, and they were really interested in honey and bees. So they came, and I put them in bee suits, opened up the hive, and got them, like, really deep into the hive and beekeeping and they really had such a great experience oh that's lovely and all of these things what is this this is some kind of ginger 
This is tea. So we oh. started doing some herbal teas with the honey. Um, and this one is just a lot of different floral sources. It's um, bee pollinated oh, tea. Okay. So it's different flowers and, and herbs and, and seeds that are all bee pollinated. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yummy, they require yummy. bee pollination. So we have all those. We have these. Just this would. That's would the honeycomb. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think of a traditionally with something like this. Yeah, that's the old-fashioned old way fashion. that the bees make it in the wooden box. Check this out. Wow, that's, that's old school. That's old school. That's so nice. And you even do bee paintings with the beeswax? Is that what you said? Yeah, so you could melt beeswax, mix it with pigments, and it's called encaustic painting. It's an ancient way of painting before they had, you know, regular tubes of paint that you can wow. buy in the art store. And for people who are just joining us, we're in Weston, Connecticut, and we're learning all about beekeeping. And it really is fascinating. And some of the products that are made from honey, which I can't even believe this. And I so this is bee pollen. This is the pollen that the bees gather from the flowers. Oh. They carry it on their back legs to the hive. You can smell or you can eat it. Mm. And people take this as a vitamin, sort of an immune booster. It has all kinds of B vitamins. <laughs> B, B vitamins, wow. minerals, enzymes. And um, people are taking it to help them with their allergies and boost oh, really? the immune system. Okay. Yeah, you can find them in the health food store. And bee then, of course, we have pollen. the honey. Bee pollen. Oh yeah, so God. we have a lot of different kinds of honeys from all outfits, different flowers. Right, that you would normally wear because you have to protect yourself. Yeah, so my bee suit. And the I, hats. we got to put on the hats The now. bee hats. Let's put on our bee hats as we make our way around. And there, so your books have expanded. Oh, I put my little Bouvier cap Oh, you look adorable <laughs> in that. <laughs> you have to take that home. Yeah. I want to come when we can touch the bees. Yeah, can we'll we go them? inside we and really we'll do the bees. Them, we well, we could pet them. We can pet them. On, on good days when yeah. they're very gentle, we could. <laughs> and here your book. So congratulations, because when yeah, you were on Pet you. Talk, again, I know you were uh, doing a chapter in the beekeeping for, for dummies. dummies book. Yeah, and my mentor, Holland Blockiston, in, invited, yeah, invited me to write the honey chapter. And does it surprise you how it's grown? You just sort of it's amazing. love it so much, which is really something I love to share with people, that you can turn a passion into something that's really huge if you choose to yeah you, you know i just followed the road but of course a lot of work there's a little bee <laughs> they're really kind of fuzzy yeah right? this is just a little yeah. prop but so cute, cute right one. let us come over here because i want uh people to know once again that they still can uh come for classes your classes yeah. aren't over yet um you have something coming up on november 25th Yep, we have our uh, last talk tour and tasting, okay. where the public can come sign up on our website and get a nice tour through the apiary and, and this taste honey. You really have to see it. Also, you will go to places and give talks, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess give classes if somebody's interested in that. Yep. How can they get in touch with you? Probably through the website on uh, redbee.com. I have all of our products and our events that we have here. And then the other thing we're doing is on December 9th, we're going to have a holiday open house. Oh. So the barn will be open for people to come and shop and buy honey for holiday sure. gifts. And we do gift boxes and different baskets. And ah, so I people can come. We'll have honey to taste. We'll have some cheese. It's so worth it. It's so much fun. I mean, it really is. And it's just so much, you know, from yeah. just those little bees and that queen bee. I want to be a queen bee. You want to be a back. queen. But, <laughs> but, but all you work so hard. You work so hard. You don't get to you don't get to go out and visit flowers. You spend all your time in the hive. But they, I guess they don't mind. They don't mind, but they get taken care of. Yeah. The, the worker female bees take care of them. They, you know, groom her and make sure she feels Amazing. good and she's, you know, all around and has places to lay eggs. No wonder she's so a she's queen. pampered. Ah, she's pampered. She's okay, a pampered queen. We want to say thank you so much to Vic and to Rachel and to Layla for coming by. Oh, Layla, <laughs> look at how cute. Hi, she's honey. So cute. And for you adopting her. She's so she's very cute. Precious. Isn't she? Oh, look at goodness. she's such a good girl. <laughs> oh, so everybody, please get in touch. We're on Marina. Facebook yes. as well. On Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so yep. much for having us. I'm very excited for your success. Thank Again, you. it's been like maybe 10, 15 years, it's, 100 years that we've seen you, but oh, we're so happy that you're doing oh, so well. Oh, it's so wonderful to be back in touch with yeah. you yeah, and beautiful. be on your I show like your again. Bees. Thank you. Bee. It's okay, all about everybody. the bees. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> this has been Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. Thank you. Bye.